you are in a webinar called Make the Most of the Margins with Hypothesis Social Annotation in Blackboard Learn. Um, this is co-hosted by Hypothesis Social Annotation uh, Software and Blackboard Learn Learning Management System Software. Uh, most of you, I expect, are Blackboard users um, and are here to learn about an app that works inside of the Blackboard system uh, called Hypothesis. Hopefully that's why you're here, because that's what we're going to talk about. Um, the agenda for today is we'll start off by discussing what social annotation is um, and why you would want to use it uh, as an instructor or why you would want instructors that you support to uh, use uh, social annotation. Um, we'll review the advantages of Hypothesis and Blackboard integration. Um, and then we'll go through a little bit of setting up hypothesis enabled readings uh, in Blackboard so you can see how easy it is to use uh, hypothesis. Really feels like part of Blackboard uh, when you're using our LMS integration. And we'll, of course, have time for a QA and a at the end and some discussion. Um, my name is Jeremy Dean. Uh, I have a PhD in English um, and taught high school and college English and composition for many years. So I come to education technology uh, as an educator um, and I'm very passionate about students and, and learning and uh, supporting teachers and really believe that social annotation is a great tool uh, for all of the above. Um, and I'm joined here by my colleague, Christy, who I will let introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Christy DeCarolis. I'm a customer success manager here at Hypothesis. I am also uh, an educator, and I started out my career as a high school history teacher, um, and then I spent about eight years as an instructional designer at Rutgers, and now I uh, am still an adjunct and doing um, adjunct uh, adjuncting courses for Rutgers. I've been using Hypothesis in my own courses since about 2019. I've had a lot of uh, success there. Oh, and I see a lot, uh, some other former high school teachers in the chat. So welcome all, um, and a lot of people from West Texas, apparently. Um, so if you could, if you haven't already, if you could please put your name, your school, your role, and then your experience with Hypothesis, if you have any so far, um, in the chat, that would be super helpful. Um, I am located in southern New Jersey, so I'm right outside of Philly, um, and uh, Jeremy shared in the chat that he is in Austin, so... Looking forward to seeing where everyone's coming from, if you haven't put that there already. Um, all right. And then a lot of you have already found your way to the chat, but if you haven't yet, uh, you can find the chat at the bottom of the Zoom page. Please just make sure that you are sending your message to everyone and not just the host and panelists so we can all see uh, what you're contributing to the conversation. So very cool. Lots of different places uh, everyone's joining from. I love it. I love seeing the geographic diversity. Yeah. How's our disciplinary diversity? What do you teach? If you're, if you're a teacher, we'd love to know. Yeah, I didn't catch any. Oh, professor of religious studies, accounting and tax. Oh, so we do have some diversity there uh, as well already. Um, so I am going to just start out by kind of just laying the foundation for everyone and making sure we know what the heck we're talking about when we're talking about hypothesis. So I just want to kind of frame it for everybody um, so you can see what is it, what does social annotation with hypothesis actually mean? Uh, and then we'll talk about why you might want to use it in your course. So I'm just going to pull up an assignment in my Blackboard course here um, just to show you what it looks like to use hypothesis. So you can see I'm opening a document right in my Blackboard course. And you can see on the left-hand side here, I have a PDF that I've loaded in. In this case, I'm using a syllabus from the course. And on the right-hand side of the screen, um, this is what hypothesis is kind of adding to our readings, is this sidebar on the right-hand side of the screen. So the sidebar has uh, annotations that have already been added by both the instructor, myself, and some students. Um, so as I'm going through, you can see that um, when I hover over an annotation on the right-hand side, uh, the text that is selected on the left-hand side is directly um, connected to that annotation. So it's changing color here. So the annotations that the instructor and the students can add on the right 
are directly um, connected to that text or anchored to the text on the left, which means that students can have a conversation about the text right over the text. You'll also notice that some of these annotations have an option to show replies. So if I expand um, one of these replies here, uh, you can see that a conversation has started. So you can start threaded discussions in the hypothesis annotation sidebar, um, kind of like a discussion board. But again, it's not the same in that we're anchoring to the text and having this ongoing conversation alongside of the text. Um, so this is basically what Hypothesis is adding to the, the readings that you might already be putting in Blackboard. Um, so again, just wanted to show you kind of what we we're talking about before we get into it. And now I'm going to pass it off to Jeremy to talk a little bit about my why you might want to use this in your course. So Jeremy, I don't know if you want to take over the screen. Uh, you can take you can keep the screen and um, we'll just kind of play it by ear since you're going to be demoing later. I think that'll be easier. Um, so we like to talk about this about how how social how social annotation makes reading active, visible, and social. Um, so let's talk about the first one, active. Um, I'm sure all of you as educators to working in education are familiar with the concept of active learning. Um, we want our students to be active learners. Well, one of the best ways we can do that is by making them active or helping them become uh, active readers. Um, annotation has always done this, right? It should be noted that annotation is not a new uh, technology, right? It's always uh, made readers uh, more active, more engaged, uh, deeper thinkers around the content that they're uh, engaging with. Um, and that's become even more important today, annotation that is, uh, as we move to reading more and more online because uh, we easily get distracted. We tend to gloss over content. This is not just me speaking from experience. This is research studies that, that show that's the case with students reading online. And annotation is more critical than ever to uh, bring back that age old tried and true practice of close reading and critical reading um, into the digital era. And that's part of what uh, Hypothesis uh, is doing. Um, hypothesis also makes reading visible. Um, and for me as an educator, and when I speak to educators, this is one of the most powerful aspects of, of the tool. Um, not only can uh, students better see uh, how they're reading uh, and think about the practices and skills that they're uh, to deploying as they're reading, but, but teachers can see uh, their students doing the reading. I'm sure all of you who have taught in a classroom have had the experience of assigning a reading and coming in uh, to a face-to-face -face class and wondering, did anybody do it? Um, sometimes people use reading quizzes to kind of enforce that. Well, uh, social annotation, which can be a graded uh, item in, in Blackboard, uh, forces students to do the reading, enables teachers to see that students have done the reading, um, but I think more importantly, uh, enables teachers to see how students are reading. Um, where are they confused? Uh, where are they excited? Um, and allows instructors to respond accordingly to that excitement and confusion, uh, whether it's individual or uh, as a class. Um, and you can see how students are developing the skills and, and intervene as necessary. Um, and then finally, hypothesis makes reading social. And this is the one that students always rave about when we're getting uh, feedback uh, from them. They love that they're able to see their classmates uh, in the text. Um, it's fun, they even say, but obviously they also talk about learning from their peers. Uh, they talk about feeling less alone uh, in the reading when, they're, when their classmates are there and when their classmates are also sometimes confused or sometimes asking questions. Um, I think this is incredibly powerful for students when they're entering college and reading more difficult texts for the first time. Um, and as they advance in a discipline uh, where the texts are becoming increasingly difficult and sometimes increasingly feel like they're written in a kind of another language, right? Uh, sometimes as you advance in discipline, the, the academies is, is, you know, new language, new concepts. Uh, and this can help students feel more at home uh, and grasp those concepts and, and develop uh, fluency with those concepts. So hypothesis makes reading active, visible, and social. I want to emphasize that this is a tool that really transcends the various uh, modalities in which uh, folks teach uh, today. Um, I discovered uh, social annotation teaching face to face at the University of Texas at Austin, Hookham Horns, um, and I found it invaluable for um, really helping make sure that students were prepared for class uh, and helping me uh, pre prepare for class because I could review their annotations and go into class and again see where they were confused. Um, or have a way to sort of more warmly call 
on a student who had made a particular annotation that could, um, you know, help us start class conversation. Um, and it really just enhanced my, my face-to-face classes, uh, my, my, the, the discussion in my face-to-face classes, because we'd taken care of some of the work that, you know, in the pre-social annotation era, I had to spend some time, maybe 10, 15 minutes at the beginning of, of class, uh, reviewing the reading, checking in with the students, and we could really dive right into the heart of things because uh, we knew where there might have been confusion or we knew where there might have been debate, um, and we can start there. Uh, so it's great for face-to-face, but it's also very powerful for uh, fully online classes. When you don't have that intimacy of a face-to-face classroom where you can all look at each other in a circle, maybe in a seminar style, and have a conversation about the text, this is as close as I've found to a way to have that experience of everybody has the book open, everybody's sort of literally on the same page, right? We're in the, we're sharing the margins. Um, and we can have that kind of intimate uh, sort of seminar style discussion, even asynchronously, uh, even remotely with a tool like Hypothesis. And I think, you know, um, a lot better than discussion forums um, where the discussion's not quite as um, circular, if you will, or not quite as authentic. Um, this is a really a way to recreate that kind of authentic conversation and authentic community, even in a fully online uh, space. So I think um, Blackboard of it all. So especially now, since we're beginning the semester, um, I know that some of you guys uh, who I can see in the, in the chat are uh, already customers of Hypothesis, so already have access to Hypothesis and Blackboard. Um, if you're not sure if you do, you could, you could ask, um, but I, I think I saw some CUNY folks, some New Alabama folks, so we've been working with both uh, several CUNY campuses and University of Alabama um, already, so you should have access to Hypothesis and Blackboard already. Um, and then some of you are new, and we'll talk about how you guys can, can get Hypothesis in your Blackboard instance a little bit later. But um, especially since we're starting a semester, one of the really cool things about using Hypothesis is not just for the formal readings that might be in a, in a, in a, in a course, but also for some of the ancillary materials, the handouts or, you know, uh, PDFs that we might send around, like uh, a syllabus. A great way to start a course um, with Hypothesis is to annotate the syllabus. Uh, first of all, you know, if you follow, you know, education Twitter, you'll always see those complaints by educators like Do the students even look at the syllabus. You know, I guess those usually happen like two or three weeks in once, you know, some student hasn't looked at something at the beginning. But this is a way to make sure students review the syllabus. Um, it's a good, you know, lightweight way to have students um, start using the hypothesis tool. It's quite intuitive and quite easy to use. Um, but this is a way to practice it before, you know, uh, more uh, summative or high stakes annotation activities. Um, and it's also just a really powerful way to open your course to, to dialogue, to hear where students are coming from, to hear where they're excited about the course, where they're worried about the course. And I think can really, you know, not to use the phrase too much, but get everybody on the same page in a very powerful way. Ditto for, um, you know, assignments, ditto for all other kinds of, you know, those uh, ancillary uh, materials that you might have as part of a course that aren't the reading, um, you can also have them annotate that. Um, another powerful aspect, we see a lot of teachers um, guide their students through the reading with their annotations. So you can pre-populate the readings for your course uh, with annotations um, that will help guide students through the content. Um, this can be an early uh, uh, semester activity or early in the term activity. Um, you can use it to sort of model the kind of reading that you want students to do. And then in later assignments with hypothesis, uh, have them demonstrate their ability to do that reading. Um, you can also go in there and uh, make a discussion forum by dropping in those questions that might be in a discussion forum. Uh, have little questions out that pop up on the side for them to respond to uh, as they're reading, to check their comprehension, uh, to challenge uh, their thinking, uh, uh, to draw their attention to a particular um, part of the text. Um, so teacher as annotator is one thing to think about as you're uh, imagining ways you might use this tool. Um, certainly the bread and butter of hypothesis is, um, as I said earlier, kind of bringing that seminar style discussion feeling um, and activity to the readings in your courses um, because you're grounding uh, the conversation that might be in a sort of another uh, window or another tab in a discussion forum divorced from the text right on top of the text. I'm an English teacher and I, I don't think I'm alone. Uh, it's not just a humanities thing to want to have students stay close to the text, 
really um, be aware and, uh, and attentive to evidence. Um, and so this is a way to really ground the conversations you might have in a course around the content in the text itself um, and have a very natural conversation flow from that. Um, I'll point out here that there's a lot of ways to use hypothesis as a very flexible tool. Um, you can have it be very open-ended and say, you know, two annotations and one reply. But you can also have uh, much more structured reading assignments where, uh, depending on the reading, depending on the discipline, depending on the point in the term, you're uh, asking students to look for certain things in a text, or you're asking students to perform certain activities with their annotations that helps them to become uh, better readers, better college level readers or better readers within a particular uh, discipline. Um, this is all just a big tease, this, uh, this workshop that we're doing uh, here. Um, if your school has hypothesis already, has a relationship with us, we do customized webinars for individual campuses. And if your school's not yet uh, a partner of hypothesis, once you become uh, a partner, uh, we offer you know more in-depth training. We offer uh, customized training for for individual campuses, and folks like my wonderful colleague uh, Christy will be leading those and really um, diving deeper into how your particular discipline or your particular course or your particular campus uh, can leverage hypothesis. Um, so more on those specific you know structured activities depending on on the discipline depending on the course. Uh, what we dive a lot deeper into the pedagogy because the tool is so easy to use. Um, and then finally, just an idea, have students annotate your lecture. Maybe you have lecture notes, maybe you have a slide deck. Uh, these are obviously for the bigger courses, um, but you can also you know, turn those into PDFs and create hypothesis assignments with those and really uh, ensure that students are understanding course concepts. Um, and maybe you can even get some feedback about what was confusing in your lecture uh, from your students and, and yourself iterate on the content to make it uh, even better for the next time around. Um, great, I think that's back to you, Christy, for more on the blackboard of it all. All right. So yes, I will be demonstrating kind of quickly how to set up a hypothesis enabled reading in Blackboard. Um, and so I'm going to go into my Blackboard course and someone did ask if it is compatible with both Blackboard Learn and Blackboard Ultra. You can use hypothesis with either one of those. I'm demoing from um, a Blackboard Learn course in this instance. Um, and we will, some of you do already have access to this. And for those of you who don't, I noticed in the chat, someone's asking, um, we're going to talk about how you might be able to get access at the end. Um, so you'll see, I already have this um, one annotation assignment in my content area in Blackboard. Um, but in order to add another hypothesis annotation assignment, um, I would wanna go into my build content area. And I am going to hover over build content. And those of you who have hypothesis will likely see it somewhere at, towards the bottom of this list. So I have many versions of hypothesis in my list here. You would only see it once. Um, so I'm going to select the version of hypothesis that I have in my build content area. And then I would be able to start setting up my hypothesis enabled reading. So I'm going to input my assignment instructions here. Uh, and then if I wanted to put some instructions for students, I could add that. Um, and then I would want to scroll down and enable the grading. You can grade annotations in Blackboard, which I will show as well. So I'm gonna enable the evaluation. And I'm going to submit to set up my just basic settings in Blackboard. Once I have done those basic settings, I'll want to actually hook the reading to this assignment. I'm going to click on the assignment title and Blackboard will show me the different options I have to link my reading to the assignment. I can enter the URL of a web page or a PDF, select a PDF from my Blackboard files, um, or select a PDF from Google Drive and OneDrive. We're also currently piloting sources, um, selecting sources from JSTOR and Vital Source bookstores. So I'll talk a little bit about these sources uh, more later. Um, but for now, I'm going to select my PDF from Blackboard. 
I'll grab a PDF I have in my hypothesis readings folder, and I will select that. So I'll point out here, I can also create a group annotation assignment. Um, so we do integrate with Blackboard groups. I'm not going to make this a group annotation assignment. I want my whole class to annotate together here. So I'll click continue. And I have set up my reading with the hypothesis sidebar on it. So it's really just a few clicks to get hypothesis added to the reading in Blackboard. I want to highlight a couple of the features that we are, our integration um, allows us you know, to do so easily. And then I'll show you how we can um, grade some of the annotations. So someone did ask this in the chat, but in Blackboard, Hypothesis for students is even easier. All they have to do is click on the readings in your content area in Blackboard and they can start annotating right away. They don't have to sign uh, in or anything. They don't have to make an account. It really just looks like it's part of the Blackboard experience. Um, and your course is a, a private group where students are annotating together so they can see all of each other's annotations, but obviously like no one from outside of the course uh, would be able to see that. You also have the option to grade annotations right in Blackboard, and it does link to the Blackboard Grade Center. So I will show you how to do that in just a moment, um, but you can filter the annotations by student and um, very easily enter scores for the students. If you choose that you don't want to grade annotations, that's also an option as well. And then, as I mentioned earlier, you can use Blackboard group sets if you want to annotate in smaller groups. So I can annotate using my whole class collaborating on a course document together if I want, or I can have students broken up into smaller groups. So say I'm teaching a class of 100 students and I don't want 100 students annotating all in one document, I could break those students up into groups of 20. Or even if I wanted you know, super small groups, I could have students in groups of five annotating a document. So depending on what your goals are with social annotation, uh, there's different uh, ways that you can best set up assignments. And Jeremy kind of uh, alluded to the flexibility that Hypothesis offers and how structured you'd like the assignments to be and um, how many students you want in annotating together. So I'm gonna hop back into Blackboard just to show you what grading in annotation or in hypothesis looks like. So I actually don't have, I keep on exiting on my whole course by accident. Um, I don't have any annotations in that assignment that I just created. So I won't have anything to grade. But if I go back into my syllabus annotation assignment, you'll notice that at the top here, I have this grading bar. So I have two students that have annotated on this document. Um, and any students who have annotated will show up in this drop down menu. I can click on my student. And once I click on a student name, it will filter the annotations that that student has added to the course. So I can easily review what just that student has added. And I can input a score for that student here and submit it to the grade book. So it's very easy for me to move through the students once I um, have entered Enrique's grades, I can move on to Jamie and then I can review Jamie's annotations. So um, I do want to note too that sometimes, you know, a student is replying to other students and then you might want to see the context of that reply. So you can also choose to expand conversations if you want to see what the, the students are talking to. Uh, so there are lots of different ways that you can use Hypothesis, but no matter what you're doing, um, grading is pretty simple to review in addition to the setup. And I did put a link to the slide deck in the chat a while ago. I'm going to drop it in there again just so everyone has access to that. We do have access um, or sorry, we do have resources in the slide deck um, that might be helpful to share with your students if you do decide to annotate with them, including annotation tips for students and then adding images, videos, and links to their annotations. Um, it might be helpful to share these kinds of resources with their students to get them annotating in a very substantive way. Um, so I just want to review very quickly the specific types of documents that you can annotate with Hypothesis, um, because I think I saw 
Um, yes, I saw someone ask that in the chat, so I'm going to review that. Um, we have a couple of different types of documents you can use in Hypothesis. Uh, you can annotate web pages and online articles with your students. Any um, public facing web pages that you want to use in your course, you can link with Hypothesis. So if it's not paywalled, basically, if, you, if your article is not paywalled, you can annotate PDFs. That's what I was demonstrating to set up. And then you can annotate any open textbooks and any open educational resources. So whether that textbook is a PDF or if it's in, you know, an OpenStax URL or something like that, we can bring those into Hypothesis to have students collaboratively annotate those. And I think Jeremy mentioned in the chat that we are doing pilots with JSTOR and Vital Source eBooks so that um, we have more uh, options for, you, for where you can grab uh, text for students to annotate. So we're piloting with those partners now and looking towards creating uh, more integrations in the future. And then I also alluded to what you can put in an annotation. Um, annotations are not limited to text. Students can add images to annotations. They can add videos, um, embed YouTube or Vimeo videos right in the annotations themselves. Um, if you are a STEM professor, they can use LaTeX to add equations to the annotations. Um, and they can also add links and tags. So to me, this is really important to me as an instructor that students can bring in these different types of resources while they're annotating because it creates reading and makes it a more multimodal experience. So not every student is super strong at reading as the best form of learning for them. So if they can bring in an image to connect that to a concept, or if they can get a video that's going to explain that concept in a different way, um, that's a great way to, um, you know, make a space for students to have a multimedia way of learning content. Um, so there's lots of different ways that students can contribute to the conversation, depending on how they learn best and how they communicate best. Um, and we do have links um, to our help docs here on how students can learn how to do that in the annotations. So I would just share with the students how they can add links, images, and videos to the annotations if um, they, if you would like them to do that. And we also have lots of hypothesis uh, in Blackboard resources. So the um, the things I went over today are in the slide deck if you want to learn more about setting up hypothesis readings in Blackboard, how to grade them, and then um, how to use hypothesis with your course files in Blackboard, as well as small groups. So all of these links would be helpful to check out. Um, and then, Jeremy, I think we're going to pass it off to you before the Q&A, because I know we've had lots of questions flying around in the chat. So if you want to take over again, yeah. I'll hand it back to Jeremy. Happy to take over. I'm a little dizzy by the all the great questions in the chat. Um, I think uh, I tried to jump in there, and Christy will as well. Um, but uh, I really recommend getting in touch with us at Education and Hypothesis. Um, and, uh, you know, we have folks... Uh, available to help uh, at all times. Every school has a customer success manager that supports the school, and we have a great support team, too, that um, is kind of the, the star of our team because they're so so responsive. So let's jump into talking a little bit uh, more about what you get when you partner with Hypothesis, and those from U of Alabama and some of the CUNY campuses uh, that are already partners uh, maybe can uh, testify to this. Um, uh, can you advance one, uh, Christy? I know you're trying to probably trying to jump into the chat and, and do this as well. Yeah, so, so sorry. Um, sorry. Uh, so one of the things that I'm really proud of at Hypothesis um, is the customer success program that we've built out, customer education program that we've built out. Um, We've hired a bunch of former teachers, high school, college teachers, instructional designers like uh, Christy that really come from. Uh, from, from the world of education uh, and know what it like, it's like to stand up in front of a class and, and you know, know about teaching and learning and, and trends and, and, and theories of teaching and learning. Um, and that's, the, that's your main point of contact when you're partnering uh, with Hypothesis. And so it's not just about the technical support um, and kind of basic onboarding or guidance through implementation of how to integrate it in Blackboard. It's really about somebody like Christy with their expertise uh, matching with you and, and instructors on your campus to uh, understand their challenges 
uh, and their goals and helping align um, the affordances of hypothesis social annotation uh, to those to the needs on your campus. Um, so we offer really deep uh, uh, pedagogical support. Um, we offer one-to-one -one instructional design consultations. So if you're teaching in a certain course and you have some ideas or you have no idea, then you want somebody to talk to about how hypotheses could be integrated. Uh, Christy and, or some, one of our customer success managers will be able to meet with you one-on-one -on -one, uh, to walk through that. We also offer customized webinars. Um, they can be generalized training. Uh, they can be specific to a discipline. I love to talk to rhetoric uh, schools um, uh, or rhetoric departments rather, and then English departments, uh, first year composition programs, uh, given that that's my background. Um, but we have a wide range of sort of disciplinary expertise so that we can really customize workshops to a particular department. Um, and we also host, a, a, we have a wide range of workshops that we offer to our partner schools, ranging from the basic introduction to why and how to use images and video, to deep dives on the utility of tags and other features, um, and you know the, how to grade in different ways with hypothesis. So uh, become a partner and all that will be uh, available to you. Uh, we also have a great uh, show that we host uh, every couple of weeks called Liquid Margins. Again, the links in this deck are live, so if you get access to the deck, which we shared above in the chat, um, uh, you can see the archive of Liquid Margins. Um, this is where we get together and talk with practitioners, um, educators, uh, those that support educators at institutions, uh, and talk about different topics. Sometimes it's a disciplinary topic, sometimes it's an issue like equity, um, and we talk about how social annotation uh, can help um, in, that, in that department or with that particular uh, topic. Um, we also have uh, launching actually uh, this week, so you have to stay tuned for this one, follow us on Twitter. Um, we're launching a, a resource collection. Uh, it's an open education uh, assignment bank, um, and we've already got some great contributions from our champion, you know, uh, users. Uh, basic assignment ideas that you can copy or you can adopt, adapt uh, for your particular um, for your particular courses. So stay tuned. Again, follow us on Twitter. Uh, uh, hypothesis uh, on Twitter, um, and you'll see the launch of our resource collection, which has, it's basically an assignment bank um, with uh, assignments produced by uh, some of our most active and eager um, uh, educators in our community. Um, we also have an educator forum. Uh, it's on Slack, uh, where you can go and ask questions or go in and share an idea and get uh, feedback from your peers or get help uh, from your peers. The customer success team is also in there, but it's also a community of educators you know, that talks and shares ideas um, there. Um, and then finally, for technical support, um, you can go to support at uh, Hypothesis. So quite you get quite a lot when you partner with Hypothesis. We're very hands-on, we're very white glove. We really wanna be true partners um, as you implement the tool um, at your, uh, in your course or at your institution. Uh, what does the next slide have for us here? Um, so this is just one of the, one example of the kind of resources we offer to our partners, um, uh, the partner workshops. I sort of alluded to this earlier, but you can sort of see the diversity of different types of, of uh, workshops and trainings, if you will, um, that we offer. Um, Christy actually leads that program and is uh, it's, it's, it's quite exciting. We had about 69 people attend our uh, annotation starter assignment workshop last Friday. So that was a great, great conversation. and. Uh, Really excited about our partner workshops. Um, we have a deal for you uh, today. We have our best uh, deal of the year, um, a spring starter incentive. So if you're not yet a customer of Hypothesis, you're not yet a partner, please reach out to Education at Hypothesis. We can move very quickly to get Hypothesis up and running for you um, at your institution. We have all our you know, contract stuff and uh, accessibility and other kind of compliance stuff in order so that we're ready to move very quickly for folks, even though it's the beginning of semester. Um, so we'd love to get you started with our spring starter incentive. Uh, it includes complete access and unlimited access to the app uh, at a low price um, and includes all the support and uh, you know, success partnership uh, that I mentioned above. Um, and if you do do a spring starter package, um, this spring, uh, we can discount, you know, uh, a contract that begins next year um, uh, and, and use the money that you would put towards, um, towards, the, towards the starter package for the spring 
towards a, a multi-year contract that might begin uh, in the fall. And the, our starter package is a great way to get access to the entire uh, campus. So lots of different departments can access it um, at no, no cost per, per user, just one flat fee, um, and really evaluate uh, how extensive the interest is in the tool, um, what departments are interested, uh, how are they using it, who's using it, and that can better sort of position you for um, with your the, the budget calendar uh, to make a decision about what makes the most sense for you um, in, the, in the upcoming academic year, if you want to move forward, uh, and how big a, a a contract you want to have because we're very flexible and we just want to do what's best for for your community. Um, I think we're rounding out here, Christy, and moving towards where if there are uh, some of the questions that we haven't been able to ask in the chat. I think folks can actually, you know, uh, technically raise their hand with the Zoom feature um, and uh, or otherwise signal to us that you'd like to actually ask a question. Um, outside of the chat. So I don't know, Christy, if there's anything you saw that is worth surfacing, um, but we're also happy to uh, take questions at this point um, and uh, have a little conversation. Um, I did see that someone asked if audio files like MP3s can be added within the annotations. Um, those cannot be um, directly added to annotations as Hypothesis doesn't actually host um, any media within the annotations itself. It, it has to exist elsewhere on the web, like a YouTube video or something like that. Um, but there are some creative workarounds, um, like some instructors might choose to use something like Flipgrid, uh, and then students can actually embed their Flipgrid videos in the annotations. Um, and I think Flipgrid might offer some audio options that could help with that kind of project. So um, that's the kind of support that customer success uh, at Hypothesis can really help in brainstorming how to make the assignment that you want to happen actually, you know, come to life. So any other questions out there in the chat or um, um, if we're not, someone, Courtney asked, if we're not grading in Hypothesis, is there a way to sort by student? Um, if you're not using the grading tool at the top here, uh, you don't have a way to necessarily sort by student um, by within the document itself. However, the hypothesis sidebar does have this little magnifying glass and you can type a student's name in there and then filter the annotations um, for that student right from the search bar. And uh, Christy Gale asked if we're gonna talk more about grading um, and I think give recommendations. I don't think we're gonna do that deep of a dive or we're back in the grading view here, uh, Gail. Um, but if you go back to the deck, Christy, there's a grading uh, partner workshop coming up. I guess we don't have the schedule there, but maybe you can open it up. No, I think um, um, the first Friday in February. So maybe Friday, February 3rd is our grading and annotation, okay. um, awesome. is reading and feedback for annotations workshop. If you want to check that out, Gail, uh, we'll give yeah, recommendations get... for rubrics and, and things on in that session. Right. Somebody asked about rubrics. So again, once you're sort of involved in the hypothesis community, there's a lot of different great programming um, that can support all different aspects of how you implement the tool and how you're using it in your course, uh, including grading, including, you know, leveraging features like uh, multimedia and tags, as, as I mentioned before. Any other questions? Um, I think Courtney has a support question. Um, I was going to try to get a link from my support team if she's still here to, to I actually to was adjusting. I shared the link with her, but she said she had already done that. So I told her to email support. So Courtney okay, is hopefully getting assistance from support. Um, Gail's asking to double check if CUNY City College is a partner. Uh, no, CUNY City College is not currently a partner. Um, I work with this, the CUNY schools. I'm the customer success manager for the CUNY schools we do have subscriptions with currently. Um, so. Yeah, Gail, but we'll, we can be in touch. Um, I'll get in touch with Lisa Gillis, who's our rep that's, uh, that works with CUNY uh, and has for some time. Um, and uh, she's in touch with the folks at the system. Um, so if we can get you know in touch with the right people uh, at City College, I, I feel like they tried before in the past. Um, we can restart that conversation, but we have everything set up with the system to move forward uh, really quickly. Um, so we'll be in touch with you, Gail. Um, and then UTEP. Uh, I feel like UTEP is a partner, but um, 
Let me check. What about Baruch College, Christy? Um, I believe that um, Lisa is in conversations with Baruch right now. So it's not currently a partner, but hopefully we will be available soon. It looks like UTEP is currently piloting hypothesis. So the access there um, should be there. Do we have a list? Uh, that's a good question. I guess there's a, there's a place on our on our website where there's a bunch of logos. Um, it's not super secret. We like to advertise <laughs> who's on our, who our partners are, Beth. Um, uh, the best thing to do is get in touch with education um, and they'll either start that conversation with you um, or pass you on to somebody like Christy to sort of you know make sure that things are installed where they're supposed to be installed so that you have access if you already are a partner. Um, I believe UTEP is, is piloting, but I will get in touch with Gina, um, who is it that asked about UTEP, uh, Diane, um, we'll make sure Gina gets in touch with you uh, about, uh, about UTEP. We've got UT Austin and Rio Grande Valley, I know, um, and a couple of the Tamus, um, but I'm not, not certain about UTEP. It does look like they're piloting when I check our system. Um, does anybody have a question that has gone unanswered in the wonderful flurry of the chat? Um, I believe we are we are recording this, so we will send um, the recording to everybody who registered. Um, and I think, do we typically send the chat as well? I think we can, right, Christy? Um, yeah, we'll send the chat as well because there was a request for that. Um, but uh, if you have a question up above, um, great, yeah, we'll do that, Joseph. Um, if you have a question up above that, that got overlooked by Christy and I as we're trying to sort of do uh, tag team the presentation and tag team the chat, um, feel free to paste it again um, and uh, we'll happy to answer it live here. Thanks so much, Regina. Well, great. I'm getting the sense that folks are thankful <laughs> and I've had enough information for now, which is probably about the right uh, dosage here, 45 minutes of uh, new information around Blackboard and uh, and hypothesis social annotation. Um, we are excited, Courtney and others, uh, for you to use this with your students. Um, the best part of our job is hearing how instructors are using it with class with their classes and hearing both about the challenges and successes. So um, please do be in touch. If you are already a hypothesis partner, um, you know, let us know how it's going. Um, if uh, you are not yet a hypothesis partner, again, the best step is to reach out to education at hypothesis. We can move quickly. A lot of the conversations are already started at places like um, at Baruch and City College, for example, where um, your enthusiasm, if you'd be new to the conversation, might help us really move quickly and get it in place for you for, for this spring uh, semester. Um, so uh, great to see the uh, CUNY folks show up. Um, my uh, uh, dear friend, uh, Jeff Allred, teaches at, uh, at Hunter College. Um, so uh, we definitely want to support all the folks in CUNY and across. And I uh, don't remember the name of the person from Mexico City, but I don't think we have any schools in Mexico yet using the tool. Um, so we'd love to make your institution the first. Um, oh, there we go, Regina, <laughs> thanks. Uh, yeah, I'll make sure somebody gets in touch with you, Regina, uh, about, about Mexico. Um, would be thrilled to have our first uh, Mexican, Mexican university uh, piloting a tool. So thanks so much to everybody for your eager and enthusiastic participation in the chat, which I like to think of as the annotation layer of the Zoom webinar. Um, annotation is everywhere. Uh, and uh, we're thrilled to continue working with you if you're a client. Um, and if you're not a client, we'll be getting in touch and uh, bringing you into the community. So have a wonderful uh, Wednesday afternoon or morning, depending on your time zone. Um, and uh, yeah, go forth and annotate. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone.